Good morning viewers today i am present before you with the analysis of the poem background casually written by famous indian english writer nizim ezekiel before i begin the podcast it is advisable that you keep a notebook and a pen so that you can jot down the important points relating to this particular topic it is further advisable to use earplugs for listening to the podcast so here i begin let us look at the very first line of the poem and what we find that the first line is the example which is giving us the present valuation of the past the line introduces a preference made all through the poem the self perception of the speaker as a poet this self perception is immediately attached to irony with the addition of rascal and clown from irony this present perception of the past slides to self pity a rather clever ploy that corners the reader's sympathy as well as explains away the lack of heroism in the self the reader is required to agree that this boy of meager bone with not even the skill to fly a kite is not destined to achieve anything too noble so the assertions of self satisfaction at the poetic achievements of this self in the third section of the poem come to be accepted easily the second stanza slips from third to first person in the second and third stanzas the multicultural mix of the society in which the speaker has grown up is introduced through the self pity ploy these two stanzas insistently introduce a major strand of this poem's thematic idea that is identity the challenge to coherent formation of identity is indicated here as related to the mixing of cultures that are not devoid of intolerance toward one another amid the unhappy school life a poetic career has without much ado announced itself that year i won the scripture prize this line is suggestive of the inclination of the child The last line of the fourth stanza is typical of Ezekiel in the use of antithesis. Intimations of failure are always around the corner in his autobiographical poems. The above two stanzas squeeze a long duration into rapidly moving lines. Growing up amid diverse influences, the speaker expands the base of the incoherence of his identity to include yoga, zen, Jewish theology the alliterative line philosophy poverty and poetry burdens the experiential statement with the load of a lifetime inclination many of ezekiel's poems suggest this inclination enterprise for example usually they indicate symptomatically the poetic credo of this poet to treat personal experiences philosophically to produce poetic significance the second section of the poem brings in adult experiences as suggested toward the end of previous stanza amid rather tedious lines the above quoted stanzas introduce the summary dismissal of the self that recurs in ezekiel's poems the sense of failure is recurrent but ezekiel usually positions these statements strategically in the poems their function is not to state to the reader the sense of the speaker's disillusion these lines are positioned by ezekiel in such a way as to herald the experiments that lead the self toward the present significance the stanzas also indicate the speaker's decision to turn away from the metrocentricness of the colonial mentality The last line could have been interpreted as being puerile patriotism had it occurred in a poem less ironic than background casually a lasting question something that has characterized Ezekiel's approach generally is introduced in the first line of the next stanza how to feel it 
home is a question raised by many of Ezekiel's poems about identity. What I want to indicate is that the manner Ezekiel frames the identity question is apparent here. He makes out a case for homely feeling as a measure of identity. With homely feeling comes responsibility. The third section swiftly moves on in life. The speaker is mature now, he is through his experiments, he is ripe with his experiences, so that he can now give out his conclusions. That is, within the poem, the narration of experiences is now over, and it is time to draw out philosophical implications. The later dreams were all of words picks up the theme of poetic career. The poem is now poised to give us a peep into the poetic process. This is a remarkable stanza which very concisely states a complex attitude to poetry. The speaker puts simply that his approach to poetry is rather pragmatic. The inner and the outer storms are not to be seen as problems to be solved. It is not a measure of one's wisdom to solve them. The wisdom is in playing the fool yet cashing in on these inner and outer storms by making them the subject of one's creativity. It is a pithy way of saying that the poet has to respond through his or her creativity. These two stanzas, jerkily moving away from the earlier stanza, sum up the speaker's socio-political stance, the colonial divide between the metropolis as the center and India as a background, background and backward place is alluded to here. Staying in India is seen as a committed move. The ambivalent place of the homely critic is stated in the first line of the above quoted stanzas, Indian landscape sears my eyes. The necessity to assert one's commitment to one's station arises because of the foreigner's viewpoint. From their point of view, being in the backward place warrants an explanation. The speaker seems to agree that his station is backward, though it is his own. The poem frames the question of identity. The poem quite clearly takes India as the place from which this view is generated. The view that raises the question of identity and the backwardness of the place, first of all, sets up a binary opposition. This conveniently sets up two categories, something called India and something called foreign. With this opposition, there is termination of the question. Then the poem sets out to resolve the puzzle. It admits that the identity of the speaker spills over a pure category. That is what the foreign experiences suggest in the poem. Therefore, the speaker has to point out the ambivalence in the identity of the self-critical yet committed to home. This view at once enables a distance from the totalized category of India and an identification with it. The problem, of course, is that the binary involved here deals with essentialisms. The perspective developed in the poem is very comforting in a way and often is seen as poetically correct too, but it confronts the question of identity in a reductive polarization between India and the foreign. So this was the analysis of the poem, Background Casually by Nizim Ezekiel. I hope this podcast proved to be of help to each one of you. Please mention your questions and observations in the comment section below. Please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to, to click on the bell icon for latest update. Thank you for your valuable time. Here's wishing you a great day ahead.